Um, I have lived in this legislative district uh, seven for 30 years plus. I have watched these communities sink like the Titanic. The Democratic Party has been in control of this community. My question is, why should anyone vote for business as usual? One minute. This district is an 80% district Democrat DPI. And you all have a voice and you all can vote. You can exercise that vote. Democrats have an issue. We fight for working families. We're fighting for the values that represent this community. We're fighting for education. We're fighting for jobs. We're, job, we're fighting for job seekers. I highly recommend that you vote Democrat and you make sure that your voices are heard. I'm accessible. I have an open door. And should I win this election, I'll continue to do that. And I'll continue to educate you and listen to your values and listen to your concerns and represent you at the state capitol. All right, Ms. Valentine, one minute response time on that. I would say in this election, do not vote for the status quo. And that's voting Democrat. I say vote for the issues that affect your homes, your families, your children. I say vote independent, which I am, because I have been fighting in this district in regards to education, which Angela Williams has not. I have been fighting for the homelessness, which Representative Williams has not. She has lobbied, and sits on the Downtown Denver Partnership, which lobbied for the urban camping ban, which makes homelessness illegal, to have be sheltered by a cardboard box or a blanket. She has not stood up for the homeless. She has not stood up for the children in this community. She has not stood up for the working families in this community. She has lobbied and she has worked for passing legislation for the wineries in this state. She has not lobbied or passed legislation for the, the constituents and directly in, in this community. Okay. And let's move to another question related to education. I know you're both very focused on that. We're going to um, start with Ella first one this, on this one. We are spending a lot per child from our audience member in our schools, but some results continue to be poor. How can we fix this, or how can the legislature fix this? One minute, Ms. Valentine. My response to that is the bait and switch tactic that has constantly used by the current Democrats. They are promoting just like 68. They're promoting just like 64. They're promoting like 2A last year. They're promoting like 2A this year. They're pimping our children for a dollar. I say no to all that. What you currently have to do is start saying no, and they have to go to one issue, um, one issue reform. All right, and Ms. Williams, your response, one minute. Education is a number one priority, and we just can't say that enough. But I believe that what we need to do, which House Bill 1202 is doing, House Bill 1202 has a task force that is reviewing the testing standards for our children. We do a lot of testing. And the testing doesn't necessarily reflect how our children are performing. We need to make sure we have quality teachers. We need to make sure that we have teachers in the classroom. We need to make sure that they can teach our children. And the Colorado State Legislature is focused on this issue. We've increased funding, and we will continue to increase funding to help our schools and help our children get a quality education. Okay, we've come to our final round of prepared questions and audience questions for our members or our candidates this evening. Angela, we're going to begin first with this last question. Those who favor government-issued photo ID at the ballot box argue that it prevents voter fraud. Those who oppose it argue it suppresses voter turnout. In your opinion, which is the greater threat to our democracy, voter fraud or lack of voter participation in elections? One minute. What is a greater threat? to our democracy process and voting is not being able to vote at the ballot. We did and we passed House Bill 1303 in 2013. It was a voter elections reform. It gives access to all people to the ballot. We have same day registration. 
we're opening up centers so that more people can get their ballots. We have an all-male ballot that will occur this year. We made sure that all voters have access to the ballot. All right, Ms. Valentine, your response, one minute. I think the biggest tragedy actually is both because you have a low voter turnout because people are sick and tired of the status quo. So they don't vote because they think their vote doesn't matter. The second is voter fraud because you have individuals who would like to vote but are not given the opportunity to vote. But the current, I guess the, the current state of the federal laws does not provide them the opportunity to. So I say that has to be reformed somehow. Stop the mass deportation. There has to be some type of um, equivalency so, so everyone can be able to cast their vote because that's what this country was built on. Okay, let's move to our lightning round for these two candidates. And uh, this one, ladies, you'll just be asked to 